What's up guys, Josh Profits here. So in this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to actually contact the distributor, brand, or wholesaler and how to negotiate your way into the account um, and increase your success rate of actually opening up retail accounts. This is a huge problem. This is probably the biggest problem when it comes to wholesale is actually getting access to the retail account. Um, a lot of people have this issue and I'm gonna tell you exactly how I handle this. Before I get started, I just wanna say thank you to everybody that has uh, subscribed to the, the channel. I really appreciate all the feedback and the support from you guys and everybody that's been leaving a comment in the comment section below. If you don't know already, I'm actually running a contest on every single video that I put out. Um, all you have to do is like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button, the notification button that's right beside the, subscri the subscribe button. Is If you guys do that, you have a chance to win a one hour free call with me. It could be anything, Amazon, eBay, e-commerce, local resale hustle uh, related. That's all you gotta do guys. Um, super pumped about that. Th once again, thank you so much. Um, let's get started, let's get into this video. So, the number one thing I wanna tell you guys is do not overthink uh, this whole process. A lot of people are overthinking it and they they don't know where to start when it comes to contacting them. They're scared to contact these brands or distributors because they're afraid of rejection. Um, if you're afraid of rejection or you can't handle their rejection, uh, you will not make it in this business. I promise you that. I can guarantee you that. If you're able to handle rejection and counter rejection, then you'll be very successful in this business. So. Moving forward, as you guys can see here in the background, I've got my uh, screen shared with you guys. You see Duracell. Um, the reason I picked Duracell is because everybody knows about Duracell battery. Uh, this originally was a distributor that I reached out to and I got access to Duracell, but the issue was that they wanted me to, uh, to buy like a ridiculous amount of inventory. I'm talking like trailer, tractor trailers worth, um, and at the time, I did not have the capital for that kind of stuff. So, guys, this is basically what you're going to do. Um, as you saw in my previous video, let's say you came across Duracell was on Amazon. It was a great seller, and you want to reach out to them. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to Google. I use Google for absolutely everything when it comes to finding distributors and brands. And I'm going to type in Duracell. And Duracell was the, you know, the, the brand's website came right up at the top. And it was Duracell.com. You're going to go down and you're going to find where it says contact us. It could be at the top, bottom, whatever. Oh, you guys just lost me here. One second. Float on top. Okay, guys. So once you find their contact form, this is going to be the easiest way to get into them. Uh, a lot of the times you cannot find their actual distributors. You can only find the brand itself. Now Duracell is not going to sell directly to you. Uh, they're such a big brand and you're such a small guy that what they're going to do is they're going to have distributors or wholesalers located all around the world basically depending on how big the brand is Duracell for example has them all over the world <clears throat> and they are going to refer you to a distributor or wholesaler that is in your region and then you're gonna work one-on-one -on -one with them you're not gonna work work with Duracell so what you're gonna do guys is the original point of contact is this contact form and so you're gonna fill out your personal information here with your business information I'm not going to fill my note for obvious reasons. Uh, reason for writing, look, I would either click ask a question or where to buy or even other. All three of those are suitable. Very simple, guys. Product, I would either just write all or I would put NA. Sorry, NA. Right? Non applicable. Now, here comes where everybody overthinks this stuff is the comment or the query uh, box or section. In this section, guys, this is exactly, okay, this is what I did. I went back to my second distributor that I opened up a retail account with, 
and I went, I scrolled through my emails and I found the exact email that I sent to them because I wanted to give you guys a real life example. So here it is right here. Okay, guys. Um, I kept it short, sweet, and to the point. You don't need to overthink it. Like I said, hello, my name is Josh Doyle from company name. Just insert your company name here in city and country. Insert your city and country there. And the reason why you're going to want to include that is so that they don't need to waste any time and you make it easy for them to just refer you uh, directly to the distributor in your region. Uh, I found your company listed online. I am I am interested or I am very interested in setting up a retail account with you. Please let me know what information and qualifications you require from me and I will be happy to return them immediately. Thank you, Josh Doyle, company name, Josh Doyle at companyname.com. If you guys want, please pause this video now so you can write this down, copy this template. It's super easy. Like I said, don't overcomplicate it. Short, sweet, to the point. Um, you're going to want to put, obviously, in your signature here, your company name, and make sure that you write down here that it's, number one, it's coming from a business email. This is not coming from joshprofits at gmail.com. This is going to come from joshprofits at the company name.com. Um, you want to give off the most professional image guys first impressions are everything and this is your first impression whether you're emailing for the first time or you're picking up the phone you're going to want to be as professional as possible uh, you don't want to just say hey uh, my name's josh can i buy your stuff so i can sell it on amazon that's not what you want to do you want to keep it professional like this um, now another thing too guys is i never tell them that I am an Amazon seller on the first point of contact. I never tell them that I am an e-commerce seller on the first point of contact because you don't want to give them information or reasons why to reject you. You always want a response from these people. If you can get a response, then you have an opportunity to counter them and be able to open up the account. But if you don't get a response, then how are you supposed to open up the account, right? You want to be able to hear people's rejections, not just have them not respond. Okay, moving on. So what's going to happen now is somebody from Duracell that ha uh, handles their customer uh, emails is going to come across this and they're going to read it and realize that you want to do business with them and open up a retail account. So they're going to simply refer you or give you the contact information to a distributor in your region. So let's say Alex is the customer care person at Duracell. Um, what Alex is going to do is he's going to send you an email back and say, hey Josh, thanks for reaching out to us. Um, here is the contact name and email of a distributor in your city and country or the closest one to you that you can deal with. You write back. Thank you so much, Alex. Really appreciate that. So you and Alex are now done. You, there's no more contact between you guys. Now what you're going to do is you're going to reach out to the, the distributor that he referred you to, and you're going to say basically the same thing here, except you're going to alter it and say, hello, my name is Josh Doyle from company name. We're located in blah, 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 city and country. Um, I was, re instead of saying I found your company listed online, you're going to say I was referred to you by Alex from Duracell. He told me to reach out to you um, in order to open up a retail account with you. Please let me know what information and qualifications you require from me and I will be happy to return them immediately. Now, the reason why this works so well is because you are now getting a, a referral from the brand itself, so it seems. Um, Alex at Duracell doesn't do any, the customer care people don't do any digging and say, hey, is this guy an Amazon seller or, you know, what is he doing? They just simply want to refer you to the distributor. It's the distributor's job. But if you come across like you got a word of mouth referral type of thing from Alex at, at, uh, at Duracell, it increases your odds. So that's number one of, uh, of increasing your odds, major key. Now, once you get a response back from the distributor, I still do not tell them that I am an Amazon seller or sell on, you know, strictly on Amazon um, until they start asking 
type of thing, like where we're selling the product. Sometimes they ask, sometimes they don't. Now, if they do ask, it's usually because they don't sell to people that don't have a brick and mortar or a retail store presence. Now, that is one of the biggest rejections. And what you're going to do when you get rejections like that, I'll give you an example of what I say. If they say, well, where are you planning on selling our products? I personally say, well, we are a very large e-commerce um, e-commerce retailer. We retail our products across various platforms, including, but not limited to the following, Amazon, eBay, Jet, etc. cetera. Um, insert whatever platform you want on there, guys. Um, Nine times out of 10, these companies do not verify that you're selling on all those different platforms. I only actually sell on Amazon and eBay. I don't sell on any other platforms, but I always tell them that I sell on more than just Amazon and eBay. Uh, it makes you seem more legit. It makes you seem bigger than what you are. And that's the name of the game is seeming like you're more professional than what you are, that you're bigger than what you are, that you're, you're perceived as... Um, a much bigger company. If I just told them that, hey, I'm Josh Profits and I'm working out of a six by 10 area in a dark, cold basement, they're going to say, okay, take a hike, dude. Like I would never, ever get a chance to open up an account. But since I come off like this over the phone or through email, um, they perceive me as something much bigger than what I actually am. So if I, I tell them, that's basically what it's up now if they reject that and they say hey you know we don't sell to people that don't have a brick and mortar store i have gotten this rejection many many times and i've still been able to unlock the key or unlock the door and get access to the catalog and open up the retail account now this doesn't work all the time guys it, it all depends on obviously the, the distributor and how good your negotiation skills are but what I will normally do is you have to talk a big game. What I did last year was I said, listen, we're very busy right now. Fourth quarter's coming up. You always, you know, right now I could say, hey, fourth quarter's coming up. We're preparing for it. We're a newly established business and our business has been exploding. We did not anticipate this type of sales volume uh, in our first year of business. I'm assuming a lot of you guys are probably in your first year. And, or you know tailor that to whatever we did not ex, ex, uh, we did not um, anticipate this kind of sales volume our business is exploding right now we're worrying on just keeping up with the demand and you know having a hundred percent customer satisfaction customer satisfaction but after fourth quarter we have full intention of opening up that retail store now guys that this is what they want to hear right you're giving them um, you know, you're not promising anything, but you're just telling them that you have an intention on doing so. Well, guys, intentions can change, right? I uh, I told many distributors this, and I still haven't opened up a retail account, or sorry, not a retail account, um, a retail store, and they haven't come back to me and saying, hey, Josh, where's your retail store? You know why? Because they're very happy with the volume that I'm doing for their company. These people all work in sales departments they just want to open up accounts and sell more product um, so if you're able to tell them what they want to hear they can bend the rules sometimes for you um, and that is a huge key guys if you take one thing from watching this video is that you can people can bend rules and you just have to tell them what they want to hear for you to get the key to the door trust me on this um, so that is the biggest rejection that you guys are gonna that you guys are gonna face is the retail store. That's what I tell them every single time. Now, if that still doesn't work, this is where I kind of bring up the big guns and I say, listen, I understand. Like I say, listen, are you guys in the business to sell product? Because we're in the business to buy and sell product, and we're very interested in doing business with you guys. We love your company. I'm. I know I can move quite a bit of product for you guys. Um, I say, what's your minimum order? Because I'll guarantee that I'll, you know, I'll exceed all five times it or I'll 10x your minimum order. Now, 
nine times out of ten, their minimum order is only a few dollars, or sorry, a few hundred dollars. You know, it could be two hundred and fifty dollars minimum order. A lot of companies that I deal with don't even have minimum orders, but they have something in place like, hey, if you order X amount, we'll send you free shipping, or your shipping will be discounted, or something like that. Um, but if you play that game and say, what's your minimum order? I can double it or triple it. They might come out with an inflationary number or a fake number where they want you to, or where they will accept you if you buy a certain amount of product to show good faith type of thing. You can also say that. You can say, listen, to show good faith to you guys and to show you that we're serious, I will purchase, you know, $5,000 or $2,000 on our very first order. Now, guys, I know this might sound scary to a lot of you because you don't have a lot of capital to start with, but take it from me. I started with $0, a credit card uh, that had a $5,000 limit on it, and my first order was $250. So don't be worried about telling people things like that because I've also opened up accounts where I told them that, and you don't really know how much you're going to order until you open up the account and they send you the catalog because you need to go through the catalog to see what items are profitable, how, how much you can actually order, uh, and what quantities and etc. So you really don't know how much you're going to order. It could be a home run, and you could easily be ordering, you know, two thousand or five thousand dollars worth, or it could be a complete dud and a waste of your time. And you're like, oh, you know, I only found two products on here, and like they're not even that great, so I'm not going to waste my time with this this distributor. In that case, you basically just cut off all communication with the distributor. You either tell them, hey, listen, we're not interested. The margin isn't there for us. Um, thank you for the opportunity. But after looking at your catalog, you know, it doesn't seem like there's opportunity here for us unless you guys can do any better on the pricing, which in that case, you can negotiate on pricing. That will be for another video. But um, that's pretty much it, guys. Like, you need to learn how to be a salesperson and sell yourself into the position, into the account. Um, tell people what they want to hear to get the key to open the door. Now, once the door is open, it, it's not you're not committing to anything. You're just telling them that, hey, listen, if you open up an account with us, um, you know, we can place this type of order if you know we find products that we're interested in purchasing. You're not telling them, hey, we're guaranteeing you that we're going to spend $5,000 with you. Um, we haven't even seen the pricing yet, and they won't show you the pricing until you open up the account. So that's how it works, guys. Um, that's pretty much it when it comes to rejections. Those are the only major rejections you're going to get um, unless you're dealing with a company like Duracell and or, or something like that where they want you to order, you know, a tractor trailer for all full of stuff and it's going to cost you $200,000. Well, then obviously uh, you're not going to do that. Like myself, when they told me, when they told me that I said, okay, like, you know, um, I have to pass on this opportunity. Thank you very much, but we'll be in contact in the future when I get to that point. And it's as simple as that guys. So if you guys like the video, if you got any value out of this, please like the video, give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment below, guys, on what else you guys would like to see, what you liked in this video, or if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button and enter the contest, guys. Um, like I said, I'm giving a what giving away a one hour free call to every single or to giving it to one hour free call to one person from every single video that I post up. So if you guys are interested in that, please hit me up. Let me know. Thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate all the support. Till next time. Peace.